Work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those who are holy, who are not holy will not see the Lord. Um, reading according to the New, the New Living Translation, verses 15 says, Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch, uh, grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. And then verse 16 is an example as much as I want to stick on verse 15. Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single male. Praise the name of the living God. I just want to add on something on what we've been speaking about lately. And uh, I'll pick from where I stopped last week when I was ministering on, uh, on Monday. There are three things that I want us to look at critically. One of the obligation and the duty of Christian is to observe. Being very careful, especially when troubles step in. You may not understand what is on the hearts of people until sometimes you subject them unto pain. Until when you subject them to pain. The real state and the truth of some people will come after you have subjected them into some kind of uncomfortable situation or circumstances. But the Bible advises us that we need to be very careful and look at each other so that none of us fails to receive the grace of God. The grace of God is available for everyone. But if we are not going to look at the bigger picture of making sure that everyone is part of this kingdom of God. Then we lose out the bigger picture. The bigger picture is making as many people be part and partial of the kingdom of God. And one of, the, one, one of the things we need to be very observant when Paul was preaching to the Gentiles and uh, the, 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 the Peters were kind of against what he was speaking. They had to come to a conclusion. And how did they reach a conclusion? They had to call what we call the Jerusalem Council. 
And in this Jerusalem council, they are disciples of Christ. Who Christ had left, the 11 that he had left. Plus the 12 who had been selected after the Lord was cast. So they invited with other elders, they invited Peter, they invited Paul. Paul explained then to them the Christ that was revealed to him. So Paul was speaking from the angle of revelation. He was not speaking from the angle of witnessing. Yet the disciples of Christ were speaking from the angle of witnessing. They had seen Christ. They had moved with Christ. They had eaten with Christ. They had walked with Christ. So they knew everything about the man Christ in the book. And there's some of them, the Peters and uh, the, this inner circle, Peter, John, and uh, James, had tested some of these some of these things that other disciples had not tested. You need to remember when Christ had an encounter and Elijah came down, Moses came down, and other uh, other prophets came down. They, 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 they actually, Elijah and Moses came down and they ministered to Christ. He told them not to speak to any person. And truly before Christ going, they did not speak to any person. So they had tested a bit of the revelation power. But they had not been part of it. But here comes Paul, who has not been with Christ, who did not walk with Christ, who did not eat with Christ, who has been made as a soul, who was persecuting the church. Here he is trained by some of the disciples. And after that, he receives the revelation of who Christ is and the purpose of God from the beginning to the end. And he understands that his calling is not in Jerusalem. His calling is not in Judea. His calling is not in Samaria. As much as his calling was to the end of the world, but it was only to, he was mostly focusing on those ones who are not Jews. I want to take you there because there's something I want to bring up. So you call up the Jerusalem Council to come and sit. But one of the reasons why they were calling the Jerusalem Council is because Paul was preaching Christ. But they were also preaching Christ. But then they were concentrating to the Jews. And Paul is preaching Christ wherever he finds them. So they had to come together. They had to come together. Because this man he understood from the teaching of Christ. Whoever speaks Christ is not against us. Remember one time when they came to Jesus Christ and said that we found a man chasing out demons in your name. And what did Christ tell him? He asked them, What did you do? They told him, They said, We saw a man chasing Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem castle to sit. For those people who don't understand how the apostles creed came into place. That is how the apostles creed comes into place. We believe in one the Father. When we are seen in the religion, we used to recite it so much. But these things we no longer recite it because we feel it is it is it is not it is not what. <laughs> Amen. Okay, let's look at it. Let me the thing with technology. It, it, it sometimes simplifies things. As much as I, I don't have a copy of it, but we can. We can get it here. Amen. I want to bring up something. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, the Apostle's Creed says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, great of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Portia's fight, was crucified, died and was buried, descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God. The Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. I will accept the Holy Church because not all of you are always in uh, in the school of ministry. I'll point out something there. Because not all of us in the school of ministry. When we say the Catholic Church, we are talking about the universal church. We are not talking about the religion itself. Praise the name of the living God. But because they practice it so much, these days we use instead of the Catholic Church, we say the we, we we use the word the the, the what? I believe in the Holy Universal Church. The communion of saints. The forgiveness of sin. The resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Now, this creed comes out out of that Jerusalem castle. But why did it come? They had to agree on some points. If somebody is not opposing this, you understand from the Apostles' Creed that is where the whole scripture rotates around. And you realize from the same Apostles' Creed, any religion that claims to serve God, there are some things they oppose. Some things they oppose. Some things they oppose. Those who believe that they believe that he resurrected, but they still have the cross on on themselves. So that is already contradictory to the apostles' creed. There is a religion which believes that Jesus Christ never went to the cross. He never resurrected. So they also believe that. So every religion that contradicts the creed, then it means that it has gone away from the foundation which is embedded in the whole message about God and the Christ himself. Praise the name of the living God. But why did the apostles labor to come to this? Because there were some disagreements between Church at that time. And those were the factions of the apostles who walked with Jesus Christ. 
The those of us who believe in the gospel, those of us who walk with Jesus Christ. And if you, Paul writes us to preach the gospel, then we are the Why? 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 Why?
His holiness. Without which you cannot see God. So you cannot be holy. If you're not at peace. Praise the name of the living God. There is no way you speak about holiness. Amen. 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 In marriage, we always say, when we are counseling people, make sure you resolve your conflict as early as possible. Most of the things, all the consequences that come like adultery are as a result of failing to get a solution between two married people. For example, if a husband is too quarrelsome, Everything is quarreling. And then sometimes well, he, he, uh, in the neighborhood, there is this gentleman who is always smiling at your wife. <laughs> Not quarrelsome. Has no problem. Once, on a, once in a while, when the quarrelsome mom or husband doesn't even remember that the days of, of, of the anniversary of their wedding, the wedding anniversary, this man, this neighbor understands their wedding next anniversary. And comes and say, hey, happy anniversary. And then the husband comes back, doesn't remember anything the anniversary. Is it ever believing? Amen. So swearing is not the solution. Amen. Amen. So slowly by slowly, the heart of this woman starts being attracted where care is. Wanji. 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 <laughs> Praise the Lord. And where is all that coming from? Because they are failed to have a communication between themselves. Because one party has chosen to be so quarrelsome. Doesn't want to listen. Doesn't want to be told it. Doesn't want to mend anything. So before you know it, the woman is taken. But because she still has this attachment to the husband, she has a mistake. Before you know it, the pregnancy is there. And then you think the husband is responsible. At the end of the day, if they go for a DNA, DNA. <laughs> the child is not for the man. So the issue that so originated from failure or seeking peace between the husband and the wife. There must be a deliberate seeking of peace between two people. It must be deliberate to seek people's peace with people. Praise the name of the living God. And the only way we'll be able to do and seek this peace we must have faith in God and we must be patient of the exercise that we are going to take. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. God was so patient. 
refreshed for some of us to get born again. Katonda amu kufa ya tuko mengine zani yako shamba la kutoa kola. They started preaching the gospel to us. Baada ni kuto budi lenjigi. When we are still in primary school. Nato shani mu mu primary. And the day we got born again, we are around eighteen, twenty, twenty-five years when we felt like hey, there is no way out. Nenye kato chuo la kuto kwa nani mnyama kabinzi? Nato kusisha kidas. Nikatwa na say as you seek in peace with the whole people. Yes, so much in bagama jina ono ni abantu, bona ni mirembeli abantu. No that you need to be holy. Manya tuteke do go so go. Must be an ingredient of faith in God. Tuteke do go wa chunonga cho kukiriza mfatonda. Process to culminate to become what God wants it to be. Ona ba ngomuti nza kuno kuno kana kufuke tuteke nikatwa chaga abe fresh. It also be patience. So that the believers will be able to follow that peace. Ah, back here is about so long. Kutu kakunda ni bago wa nzese mirembe. If you're following me last week, you understand. I talked to you about how these scriptures, how this scripture originates from verses ten. But what's wrong about that? We can only know when you are the child of God. From chapter ten, I mean, not verse ten. And verse and chapter eleven is a is a chapter of faith. And in chapter eleven, we speak. Eleven. We speak about nobody can see God without faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So peace with all men and all sex and party will be favorable in our pursuit of holiness. There can never be. Right peace without holiness. Peace and holiness are connected. They can never be true peace without holiness. But we need to be very careful as we are seeking for this peace. Because if we fail to do that, Bitterness sprouts out. But do you know bitterness? Most of the time, bitterness does not affect the other person. It affects the same person who has received it. Do you know that? If I become bitter about you, it costs me more than it costs me. Because sometimes you may not even understand that bitter. So I am affected. More than you. That's the scripture that says. Be mindful. So that no root of bitterness sprouts out. You can turn to somebody to speak to them, and the way they answer back to you is not the way you expected them. Because it is you seeking peace. Sometimes you are trying to go into an extra mile. Oh no, see, you want to be so good at it, you want to be so good at it. You need to go back and revise yourself, and you know, make up yourself and be strong, and then and try to attack it. You want to be so good at everything, and you want to be so good at it. Come with another tactic. Because if you don't look at that, the will continue. And the peace that you're looking at will not come with Amen. Amen. But God has given us a solution. When you feel that all things are failing. You run back to him and ask him to give you a formula, a way of doing it, a way of turning it right. And also the position that God wants us to go back to. It is the position of intercession. Where we go back now. Interceding for these people. Intercession is always hard. If you choose to take, if you choose to take the position of judgment. You will never intercede for somebody. If you've already made a judgment over them. 
you will never. You will never intercede. Even if you call into an intercession session and you tell me you're leading the mic, you're leading the microphone, you start saying, Father, we intercede. That is lipstick. It's just lipstick. But the true intercession is going into the feet of the other person. Imagine yourself being that person who is trying to grasp for help. For, for help. Trying to grasp for some air. I have seen somebody, somebody who doesn't know how to swim has been throwing water. He doesn't know how to swim. Have you ever seen them? You may not have seen them physically, but in this generation of TVs and whatever and movies, you have seen them. So, so with that, you, by default, you've seen them. By default, you've seen them. You may not have seen them live. But as I look at here, like, like this, this God who has know. never watched a movie, but this movie has somebody drawn. If you are here live, lift up your hand and you clap for So by default, we've seen that. So these people are crying for, they are desperate for help. And we feel like they, they are wasting our time for us to explain again. We need to get born again. But if we take the position of being peacekeepers, Amen. Amen. In the Beatitudes of Christ in, in, in uh, Matthew chapter 5, blessed are the peacemakers. What will they do? They are the sons, they are the children of God. 
Maybe the Nama Matayo Tano to Vino Mokisabo, Abakumi, and the Guanga, or Vivana Bakatonga. Vivana Bakatonga, so God showed the character of God. Havana Bakatonga, what is him by a Katonga? Come I ever swear. When we take this peace position, Katiba to Tonas Natifacho Kumi, we are the sons of God. To Havana Bakatonga, we speak peace. To Matuoka, we don't want to contradict. We step in positions where we have to step. We win these people fast if you cannot win anyone spiritually fast. It is hard to win them physically. If you do not overcome in the spiritual realm, it is hard to overcome, to win the soul in the physical realm. That's the reason why you see in the preparation of evangelism, the preparation of mission, there is always the disconnected time set for prayer. All these great evangelists that you hear, they take a lot of time before they can to preach. Once I'm out of God, that I'm following the way to, to, to partake with things of prayer. That I follow. I won't mention his name. Last week he was in Uganda. But this one of the statement that he said. The first day I was here, I failed to pray. I tried to pray, but I was not getting it. And he's a man of prayer. He said, I don't pray. But the first day in the nation, he failed to break through. Because he's in a different territory. And the first day of his preaching, you could tell if you've been following, you could tell he is not his best. Because he was preaching about Jesus. The second day, when he came to preach, he said, I've been, trying, I've been trying to pray with the spirit and that faith until yesterday that is when I got a breakthrough. And the sermon and the preaching of that day was different. Because I got a breakthrough in the spiritual way. And sometimes we want to win people to Christ. We want to be at peace with but we are not yet ready to win in our clothes. If you are not ready to win in the closet prayer, the place where you connect with God, where you speak with God, where he speaks with you, if you not win there, it is hard to win or have peace with men. And that is what helped Jesus Christ. Because a man who had the authority that Jesus Christ had, who had the power that he had, man who could look at a man, a madman who, who used to cut himself with stones. Had a legion of demons on himself. Nobody could come near him. But Jesus Christ comes. And this man is struggling. The whole village could not hold him. He's now left for the caves. But Jesus Christ, after being connected to the heavens, he can boldly come and fetch this man. And look at him. And the demons in him tremble. They say, you know who you are. Come and say, oh my God. Please don't, 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 don't cast us too far. Send us into that soil. And Jesus did not speak anything. 
Yes, so a man with such authority on himself, a man with such power in the world, there is no way a normal man could arrest him. There was no way a normal man would put Christ on the cross. There was no army was there was no army camp and ball. Yes, but there was a big Christ in this authority and in this power to put him on the cross. And because his mission was reconciliation. You say so. 
while the reason why you sing like that, the kingdom I represent is about for the other kingdoms. Not just the king of the Jews. I'm the prince of peace. I'm the prince of peace. I'm the prince of peace. As a king, there is no position. He's, there is no. He did not ascend into the position of the king. He did. But every king that stepped in, position, when Daniel was still alive, he came to consult from God. Sometimes you don't need a position. You need to take authority in the heavenlies. They pray to prove to prove that president you said no. He cheats. I cannot pray for him, but God is the one that has left him there. Whether you walk with him or you don't agree with him, pray for him. You can only change his authority. In the spiritual way. Go for it, then we fail our goal. The believers will conquer in the spiritual ring. Remember, you want to go and say your more. That is the day we'll be ready to install a born again leader. Ready now, correct to job one that you have to for take our own with your mukulebas and a mukiliza. Before we conquer there, never to know one day. If he still has 20 years to live, press for yourself for another 20 years. I'll press yourself for another four, four, four times. I get up with some of the babies and you have enough. Just that. Is the name of the living God? Come on, Amen. Amen. These days I'm so passionate about prayer. I've taken a break. I took a break when I fell ill. And soon I'm resuming again. People are asking me, now these days you put on some weights and taking a break and the body has not used it. You know. <laughs> Is the name of the lady. I'm resuming. Till when I don't know. Amen. 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 Until when we take that position, we are not ready for peace. We are not ready. 
the the number one position we take is the intercessor. Once we stand in that position, we are ready to command whatever we want to be blessed to be blessed. We are ready to ask God to do His will. His will will be done. As we occupy the positions and other positions and other things that we're looking for, we need to first take that position. And once it is taken, we will conquer. Holiness will be inevitable. We shall move in peace with all men. We shall be in peace with everyone. Praise the name of the Lord. I always give you examples of, uh, of uh, the late Benson Idahosa. That he was in authority in the spiritual realm. That he is the only man who could walk in when the president is addressing the nation. And he comes with this car. <laughs> Imagine President Museveni at Kololo. You know how the whole security is allowed. And he knows how door is passed with his car and no one could stop him. And he comes when the president is busy addressing and just comes in and sits. I've seen my friend, uh, Archbishop in the house, I've seen him. He steps in and he goes and sits in his reserve seat. He goes and sits in his reserve seat. Man of authority. Man of authority. Man of authority. Because he reigned in the spirit. How much time is that? If we start talking about this topic, we may not end. But I always believe in the message we've got at least one word. You may not have got everything. But at least it is that one word. Is that take home? Rise up on your feet. That is what I want you to pray with him. That's take home. That God will strengthen it. That God will flourish it. God will make it produce in the name of Jesus for the soul of the living God. I speak the will of God over your life. I speak the power of God over your life. As you purpose to seek peace with all men, may holiness be a byproduct in your life. In the name of Jesus for the soul of the living God. I speak the power of the will of God over your life. I speak the power of God over your life. I speak the goodness of God over your life. I speak the peace of God over your life. I speak the grace of God over your life. I speak the grace of God over your life. You shall grow stronger. You shall grow stronger. In every 
activity in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I proclaim that every sickness, every weakness, it disappears now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I command every weakness to disappear out of your life. I command every pain to flee, to leave your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Come on, lift up your voice. I know that time is up, but we can have it. Sightless cannot cost you anything. Celebrotaya rabakataya makosi kalamati neva. Lebreketaya makosi derevoko taya. Riba kasha kataya. I sign angels over your life. I assign angels over your life. I assign angels over your life.
I speak financial breakthroughs. I speak financial breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus. I speak cancellation of debt. Hallelujah. Get hold of your offering. 